Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Jewel Exchange with Spit Gems. Today, we are going to tap in on a different side of the artistry. Uh, man, I'm excited for this. This brother here is somebody who is basically, you know, the representation of the spirit of entrepreneurialism. Somebody who comes from the bottom and has clawed his way to a very established uh, level in his profession. He is a tattoo artist. He is a designer, clothing brand ambassador. He is also a patented inventor. And just an all-around OG, man. Yo, everybody, Vincent Vinny Rodriguez. Appreciate you, Spit Gems. Appreciate you. Happy to be here, dog. Happy to be here. No Appreciate doubt, all the kind I... words. Thanks for representing with that soon hoodie, too. Good looking now, dog. Already. I love hey, I'm it. I'm wearing mine, too. I'm wearing mine, too, dog. <laughs> this shit is hard. The quality, everything. The, the print, everything is, is fire, man. I love it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time, though, Vinny. For no real, problem, man. No problem, bro. No Yo, problem. Right off, the, right off the bat, let me just say, man, um, you know, I'm well aware of who you are. You know, or at least I have a, a, a decent understanding of who you are. We've got to kick it a few times. Yep. Um, but the person who introduced us, you know, shout out to my man, John, a.k.a. Damage, man. Just uh, an all-around great person, man. Somebody who is very, very knowledgeable when it comes to yep. art and artistry, hip-hop, culture yep. in general. Just uh, he's a supreme mind when it comes to that, man. And that's who introduced uh, you and I. So shout yep. out to Damage, yep. man. Shout out to John. He's the homie, man. I, that's probably one of my oldest friends of, of all time. That's what's up, man. A1 man, since day God. one, dog. God bless, man. Yo, but for the people who don't know who you are and, and, and some of your story, go ahead okay. and, and break it down for us, Vinny. Hey, my name's Vinny Rodriguez. I'm originally from Bloomington, California. We moved over here probably when I was in sixth grade to Arizona. Um, graduated high school out here. Moved back to Cali for a little bit. Got into a little bit of trouble. Came back. <laughs> uh, got a little bit of trouble over here. As soon as I had kids, I started getting my stuff together, man. Um, nice. It's been a it's been a, a long road, but um, uh, I, I in 2009 I uh, apprenticed to to be a professional tattooer, and uh, I'm I'm not sure if anybody knows what an apprenticeship entails, but it's pretty much you're 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 dedicating your life pretty much, man, to uh to ta to learning how to tattoo. You pretty much work for free. You don't uh, you don't get paid. I mean, you get paid in knowledge according to them. And it's honestly one of the hardest things to get because there's no other school you could go to to learn how to tattoo. You pretty much got to be accepted into tattooing to learn how to tattoo. Somebody's got to think that you're worthy of the knowledge. And I got lucky enough, and I was. And uh, I started tattooing, uh, finished my apprenticeship. Uh, I've been tattooing professionally for about 15 years. Um, if you if you got a topic you want me to, to stick to or anything, you let me know. But uh, that's just a little little how, how I started. No doubt, no doubt. Thank you for that, brother. Thank you. Yo, Yo um, on this show, I, I like to try to, you know, really, really get past, not past the art, but I try to look at what's beneath the art, what's bubbling to the surface, you know what I mean? What drives a person to create the way that they do? And, and because of that, one of the questions I love to ask is, there's a few of them. The first one would be, if I had to ask you, a question that you couldn't answer it by telling me your name or what you do. Who are you? I'm a creator. Fire. I'm a creator. I create things. You know, whether it's whether it's drawings, art, even my core that I made it. I, I'm I'm a creator. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. Thank you for that, brother. Yep. The next the next question that that uh I love to get into, man, is a simple one, yet a very complex one. Do you believe in God? That is a that is a good that is a difficult one. Um, so, so I believe there's a higher power. Is my is my theory? You know, um, whether it be the 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 universe, whether it be you know God, whatever. I don't I don't think there's a specific religion that's right. You know, but I do believe in that there is a higher power. Amazing, brother. I tend to uh. I tend to agree with you there. I I don't have a, a religion, even though I once did. You know, same, um, same bro, same. I, I had a religion. I entertained uh, a couple religions in a sense where I, you know, I, I almost took them very seriously. Um, but I was Christian at one point, uh, like hard body Christian too. You yep. know, like I, 
Yep. Chew your chew your ear off and debate you all night type of Christian. You know what I mean? Yep. But um yep. as I learned and I grew, I realized that uh none of these religions really made sense and that they also had they all also had elements within them that I, I disagreed with heavily, you know? So um yep. I lost that, but I never lost God, you know, and yep. that that's the thing. I never felt like a separation from God truly. So, you know, I agree with you in that sense, brother. Absolutely, man. Yep. Absolutely. Yo. Talk to me about talk to me about zip cords though. Break break okay. this whole thing down to us because because this is a crazy story, man. Okay, okay. So uh this is uh this is a zip cord right here. And uh so honestly the way that the, the idea came about and everything was uh I kept buying clip cords, bro, when I was attached when when I, I, I used a um coil machine. And uh, they would break within about two weeks, bro. And I so mean, for, for people who may not understand uh, mm -hmm. some of this terminology and all mm -hmm. that, uh, Zipcord is the product you created, right? Yep, that's my company, my cord company. It's called Zipcords. I make what, I make different types of cords. So what there's does an it RC do, though? Okay, so it pretty much just powers the tattoo machine. It goes from the power supply to the tattoo machine. It plugs into the power supply and it transfers power. It's either uh, let by a pedal or a button or something like that. But okay. uh, this, this specifically, this one that I'm showing you, this one is a clip cord. So I got a clip cord, a couple good ones, and uh, I would every time I, I I destroyed a clip cord or every time it broke, I, I would I would dissect it and check how they were made. You know what they use for what, and uh, and I have a little bit of electrical experience. Actually, I was a, I was a, an electrician before I was a tattooist, nice. so I knew the basics. And uh, so I'm like, I, I'm talking to my boss and wh whoever was working with me at the time. And I'm like, man, somebody needs to invent a good clip cord. Like, it's not even that hard. Like, there's not a lot of things that go to it, you know. And my boss is like, why don't you? And I was like, you know what? As a matter of fact, I will. So oh, I was perfecting beer. it. Yeah, I was perfecting <laughs> it in the garage, man. I, it took me about maybe six tries to kind of get a presentable version. And then once I got that presentable version... I took it to the shop and I work with a lot of badass tattooers and uh, they all seen it and they were like, this looks professional. And I'm like, at first I'm like, what do you expect? Dog? You know what I mean? But uh, anyways, so everybody put it to the test, man, and everybody liked it. And how the, the whole patent came about is uh, I was just spitballing ideas with everybody that worked at the shop with me. And I'm like, how can we make this cord better than everybody else's? Um, there's a couple things. I use gold, gold plated contacts and makes a clean current. Um, the, the, the way that the magnets came about is, uh, my homie Rocky shout out my homie Rocky. I'll never not give him credit for this, but, uh, he's the one and he's a stoner. It was funny, man, because he, he's, he's blazed, you know, we just got done chiefing and, uh, he goes, uh, he goes up. Uh, what if you put magnets on the cord? And I'm like, and no, I'm not bullshitting. We all stopped and looked at him and was like, you're a genius. And, and then so everybody started thinking of ideas how to incorporate the magnets. And we all put our input together and we came up with the first prototype for the magnets. It was hard to kind of uh, see where to put the magnets on the cord because you don't want to be tattooing in the, your chair or something to, for it to magnetize. So that was, right. there was a little bit, a little trickiness right, right there. But um, yeah, that's how, we, that's how it was born. There was a long process from getting a... It patented and everything. It's actually not not uh, officially patented. This year is a, is the last year that uh they have to to give me the patent. Okay, so 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 if they don't give it to you by this year, what happens? I think either either it's not patentable in their in their mind. Uh, but I'm pretty sure I what what happened. Why it took this long in the first place is when I when I got when I filed for this patent, it was right before COVID hit. So COVID messed everything up. Everything was delayed. As you know, it, the, the world was shut down. So I think that uh, it's just taking a little longer because of that process. But um, it, it really don't let you go past a certain step if it's not going to, if it's not something that's patentable. You know what I mean? You got past all those steps already. Yeah, I already got past all those steps. And I'll let you know the steps. The first one is uh, you got to file a, a patent search. You file the patent search. What happens is that anything that, that is close to your idea, it comes up. And if, if yours is different from all of those, then you, you, you qualify. Okay, so then you file for a provisional patent. A provisional patent is pretty much 
a temporary patent that protects your idea until you get a patent. So I, the provisional patent's already done. I filed for a utility patent, and now I'm on patent pending status. So your, so your creation is protected while you go through this process. Yes, yes. That's absolutely. amazing, brother. Absolutely. That's amazing. And I did take my lawyer's advice when I didn't even show anybody until I got that provisional patent. Because you don't even know how, how bad you want to tell somebody about your idea. Oh. Especially I work, I know nothing but tattooers, you know, but I had to keep it on the hush. It was so hard to keep it on the hush, you know what I mean? But I did exactly what the lawyer said. And, uh, and another thing, how, how I even got the, the tattoo supply company to do it, I direct messaged them on Instagram, bro. I used whatever I had available, and everybody's like, they ain't going to message you back. They messaged me back. They were like, bro, right. these cords, these are the nicest cords I've seen. I took my, my time. I made sure these, these cords were quality. Uh, so they asked me to send them some samples. I send them some samples. As soon as they got the samples, they called me up, and they said, bro, these are the nicest cords we've ever fucking seen. Like, let's talk business. So once I had that right there, once I knew that that it was it was right there, I asked every single person that I've ever worked with or that I knew that, that came into an opportunity or anything similar to this. And a lot of people told me what to do, what to ask for, what to not do. And so I had like a list of demands, bro, <laughs> for this company. And, uh, and they gave me everything I wanted, bro. Fire. That's amazing, brother. Job well done, man. Job Thank well done. And good you. on you. Good on you keeping the lid on it. You know what I mean? Because yeah, that I, was the you know, hardest I, part, bro. I can really relate to that, man. You know, a lot of times as MCs, you know what I mean, tend to do, you know, like I'll create something, I'll come up with something, and and um it's real difficult to not show it to my peers, to my colleagues, you know, to other professionals, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, bro, yep. listen to this. But you really do have to keep things under wraps as much as you possibly can because, you know, somebody told me a while ago, and this is on a, you know, this is a bit of mysticism, right? But um, uh, someone shared this with me uh, while I was in prison, actually. They said, you know, your ideas, man, when you get them, they come in threes, you know? The universe spits them out in threes. So three different people get it at the same time, and it's whoever acts on it first, right? Mm -hmm. And um, the, the number one way for you to ruin your shot of being the person who makes it happen is by expressing it verbally to someone else, even letting the words out of your mouth, you know, the frequency. And, and like I said, this is a bit of mysticism, but um, yep. there's, there's, some, uh, there's some sciences under there if you are uh, familiar with them. But, hey, uh, that right on, like though, real, that sounds like real talk right there, though, for sure. Right because on. honestly, bro, honestly, there's been a couple more tattooers that after me that that tried to come out with it, and I'll hit them with the, you know, my patent pending, and I'll send them my information and stuff. But I'm just like, there was one thing that I, I was trying to make a little power box uh, in addition to this, and uh, it kind of did a, 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 a certain thing that not a lot of uh, cores or uh, power supplies did, and I kind of put all my focus in this. And kind of dropped the ball on that. Well, I mean, not even two weeks later, bro, somebody came out with it like that. Wow. Just so, like hey, that's that. another thing for anybody out there. Do not sleep. Do not wait. The moment is now. Handle it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. I, I agree wholeheartedly. Thank you for that. that that's a great jewel hey, right I, there. I, I missed out. I literally thought about the same exact idea. And that he even made it similar than that I would have made it. And I'm just like, man, but I, I you know, I snoozed, I lose. <laughs> I lost. Yo, job well done, man. Thank you for that. Thank you for the, for the inspiration that that's going to provide so many, man, because uh, I've been greatly inspired by your story from the, from the second I heard it uh, a few years back, a couple years back. It means a lot. It means a lot. No Appreciate doubt, brother. Yo, let's talk about, let's talk about tattoos a little bit. Okay. You know what I mean? Yep. Um. What would you say is your style, you know, your style of tattooing? Okay, so before I would probably say American traditional, which is pretty much bold lines, like Sailor Jerry type stuff, you know, like no military doubt. type tats, stuff like that. I was taught by a white boy, you know what I mean? I, I was, I was, I'm Chicano, I wanted to learn how to do that gangster shit, but guess what? The person that seen that I was, that, you know, I was worthy of the tattoo knowledge, he was a white boy, so that's the style I learned. But... Now I've been noticing that when it slows down and you're super picky about stuff like that, you ain't going to eat, you know? So I pretty much, I'll pretty much do whatever 
unless it's like a portrait. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do a messed up tattoo, or you know, I'm gonna, I'll I'll give you to somebody else if I can't do the tattoo you want. But I try to be as versatile as possible, so I I do whatever whatever comes in that door, dog. No doubt, no doubt. You you definitely are are crazy ill with it, brother. Definitely, I appreciate it. Talent is through the roof, man, and we'll definitely um. We'll be showing some examples, you know, throughout the video for sure, man, uh, once I edit it up. But, um, yo, I had an interesting question, you know what I mean, yes. about tattoos. Just wondering. All right. Are there, is there anything, you know, like somebody walks into the shop, you know what I'm saying, and uh, let's say it's um a, a younger girl, let's say, you know what I mean, uh, of age, obviously, but a little younger in her early 20s or something, or a kid, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's 18, you know what I mean? He's, he's pretty young. He's allowed to get a tattoo. But, you know, these people, they're, what they're requesting is just something insane. And they want it, like, on their face. Like, let's say the girl wants a, a fucking swastika on yeah. the middle of her forehead. Yeah. Is there anything in, in, in your uh, moral toolbox? Because, you know, one could look at you and say, yo, that's not my responsibility. You know, the guy, person asked for art, I give it to him. Yeah. But do you have chambers that you go through of, you know, for maybe sure. I won't do that? I did have that theory, like, where well, I'm going to tattoo it, you know, but but then stuff came about like that. There was actually a young kid that uh, he wanted, like, a gang tattoo. And I'm like, how do I know he's really part of this gang? You know what I mean? And I'm like, you, I've been locked up just like you, dog. So I'm just like, nah, I'm not about to put, you know, get in trouble for putting something on him that, that he ain't allowed to have or whatever. So for sure, stuff like that. And even, even if it just seems like a dumb idea, every tattooer, depending on who taught you, they kind of tell you that you gotta you gotta kind of carry that moral compass with you and and not exactly. not ruin somebody's life. You know what I mean? Just just at least think about it because they, and that is there's another uh, uh, like it is it is a uh, pe people do want to uh, just get that money. You know what I mean? And Indeed. sometimes you need the money, but and sometimes, nah, sometimes you, you really gotta, need the money. You know sometimes what I mean? you really need and, the um, money, man. And this person is, you know, now, you know, I'm sure there's like a, a list of checks, you know, are they drunk, are they in yep. talk, are they yep. under the influence or, exactly. you know, age maybe is considered. Yep. Um, but, you know, if a person seems completely within their wits, right, and, and yeah. not drunk and they're saying, hey, look, this is what I want. There's got to be a point to which you go, I mean... All right, you know, look. Hey, it's it's pretty much off. what you could live with, you know what I mean? Like, I right. couldn't live with putting a swastika on somebody, so I ain't going to do that, you know? There you go. But, but I've put a name on somebody that they just, you, you could tell they're a fresh couple, you know what I mean? And I'm just right. like, they're going to go somewhere else and get that name, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I and have like, what... done that to where I'm just like, man, you know, it, that... that I think morals is a is a uh, underrated thing for tattooing. You know what I mean? It's a big it's a big uh, weight to carry when it when it comes to morals and stuff like that. Because it's Indeed. it's on them forever. It's on them for life. Right, right, and, and and yo, and I I have respect for both sides of that argument. You know the the tattooee and the tattooer. You know because you know um at the same time I'm not your dad or I'm not your you know what I mean this is my job. Yep. I put ink yep. on skin. You know so yep. I I feel both sides of that argument. But I always wanted to ask you know. That yep. question right there, man. Hey, we um, all we've all came across people that we literally say to ourselves, they should not be allowed to pick their own tattoo. Because so there all there's always those people that just have the weirdest idea or something that just won't work as a tattoo. So it just comes with the business. You see some of it playing out in public now, you know, without naming any names or nothing, because yep. I don't want to pull anybody down or knowing that they might be going through something, you know, but yep. you see people are getting tattoos of other people's faces on their face yep. like a portrait of someone's face on their face you know what i mean and yeah that's that's pretty wild right there man you know hey if, i got if, face tats but like that's a whole nother level dog I, I would not get a portrait on my cheek you know what i mean that's just i don't know i don't even know man i don't even know it's pretty out there man it's pretty yeah out there. hey it's done well though i could i will say that they got down. Whoever did that tattoo got down on it. No. <laughs> no <laughs> Good job for the artist, man. Yo, yep. yo, Vinny, what would you say is your, you know, your favorite piece that you've ever done for anybody from all time? You know, you feel like your best work. Um, I honestly, okay. So as far as art quality, there's a couple, there's one on my lady, um, of, of my a similar version to the, I don't think you could even see the logo right here, 
But uh, uh, similar to this, there's a tattoo that I did on her leg that uh, it's one of my favorites because it was it's like part of the logo. And right. then uh, I like honestly my favorite tattoos to do. Period are meaningful tattoos to people. Even not even the the art quality like it's like somebody's handwriting or something. But just to know how you uh, affected that person's life in a positive way. Like tattoos are way more powerful and way more than just art to people. You know what I mean? Or self expression. Oh. They're deep, bro. They help you help you the mourn. Ones that are sentimental. They help you and... Yup. Yup. Yeah, yeah. It's different, bro. It's a little little more spiritual than people think, you know? Absolutely. No, absolutely. And and obviously the origins and the roots of this this uh art form period are very spiritual and ancestral. Um, yep. and, and I think it's a beautiful thing where tattoos have come. Like when you think about, um, you know, just in uh, everyday society and in public, like I'm from, you know, the East Coast, right? New York, yep. Brooklyn, Queens. And um, I grew up, uh, my stepfather was tatted from head to toe. My stepfather had uh, uh, t- uh, face tats, you know, in the early 80s and was outlawed, just covered in tats, oh, you yeah. know, from, for a very long time. Hey, hey, so, so I saw when that. We're... It was illegal. Was it illegal back then? No, no, no. It was, it was, it was, you know, you could have tattoos. Everybody had tattoos and shit. But, you know, actually, what I was getting at was me personally, I saw it since youth. So I never had a problem with it, right? Yep. And my mom yep. had a bunch of tattoos as well. But you couldn't have those tattoos and, and really, like, uh, get at certain jobs and shit like that. You couldn't. It was really frowned upon, like, in, in New York, at least, in, in the yep. workforce. When I moved to Arizona about six years ago, I noticed, you know, one of the first things I seen was there was a billboard of a lawyer, a popular lawyer out here, and he had his suit on with his sleeves cut off and he was fully tat, you know, tats all over the place. This guy's on TV. I'm like, yo, Arizona's different. You know what I'm saying? Like, they really don't care about this out here. That's a good point. That's a valid point, honestly, because like I said, I'm originally from Cali. And you would think... Me being as tatted as I am is normal in Cali. I went to Cali and people were looking at me, grabbing their purses. Like it was a, it was a crazy, it was a crazy experience. Yeah, and over here, there's old people that walk up to me and like, oh man, I like your tats or whatever. It's, it's a, it's a whole different ball game in Arizona. You're right about yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. Yo, AZ is definitely a tattoo yep. state. Like you know yep. what I mean. And I, I think it's dope because um, for for example, you know, I got. I have people in my family who work in all types of different fields. One of my family members is uh, works for the bank. You know what I'm saying? A, a big bank, and um, and for uh, you know, a pretty high branch in the bank. And they got coworkers with full neck, complete neck collars, tatted, and and I'm just, you know, I, I think that's an amazing thing. It should be oh, that way. You know, same, same, bro. That doesn't your right. tats don't affect your job. And another thing is like, I think uh, they're they're a little more acceptable in Arizona too. Is is because uh, they're they're professionally done. You know what I mean? It, it, it's different when you have a, a good Talent quality tattoo. Yep. When you have a good quality tattoo point. or some busted ass gang hit or something, you know what I mean? You got somebody in the garage. That right. might still affect you getting a job in Arizona. Right, but right. Of if course. you got good, nice tats, they like it, it almost is a good thing because you got to have a certain amount of money to even afford them kind of tats. Yeah, yeah. No, if you got like the Baphomet on your forehead, that might be yep, a little rough. Yep, you know what I'm saying? Yep, exactly, exactly, <laughs> might bro. Prevent you from some things. Yup, yup. <laughs> Yo, let's talk about something out of nothing. All right, all right. So, uh, quality. Something out of nothing. Soon, uh, I came up with the idea. I just, I just was like, I need a, I need a brand. I need something to attach my name to. I'm putting in all this work. I need something. You know. So, uh, you, you know me, uh, uh, well, I mean, you might not know this about me. John knows it about me. Actually, you do. You see the tat. You see my Nipsey tat. I fuck with Nipsey hard. No doubt. Rest in peace, Nipsey Hustle, man. Rest in peace, Nipsey Hustle. And, uh, on one of his songs, he was saying something out of nothing. It was just, it, it went so quick. I was, I had my headphones in and I'm just like, something out of nothing, something, you know, just kept saying it back to myself. And I'm like. Just the the S O O N, just the symmetry of the four letters, everything, and just making something out of nothing. I'm like, that's it right there. That's that's my brand right there. And uh, so I, I I got the name. I, I told it to a couple of people. Hey, you got to keep it on the hush a little bit, <laughs> like we were talking about earlier. No doubt. But, no uh, doubt. I, when I when I really knew that it was something is uh, when I told my lady, and uh, and my lady she likes to draw a little bit too. And uh, as soon as I told her about it. 
whatever I've seen a little piece of paper or whatever here and there, it said soon she was writing it. You know what I mean? So I was like, building. if she thinks it's that dope, you know what I mean? Like, all right, I'm, I'm taking it to the next level. So uh, I seen uh, that uh, this dude, Jorge Peniche, I guess this is a guy that does, does all the uh, Nipsey Hussle's logos. He actually did the All Money In logo. Um, okay. He was having some uh, some deal for uh, um, logo design. And I hit him up, and it was exactly the price point I was looking for. So uh, he actually did my uh, my Olean logo and this something out of nothing lettering. Uh, so after that, w- once I got the logos done by him, I just started putting it on everything, bro. And now I, I, I created a tattoo for a website. Um, I'm just getting little things here and there. I'm getting st- whatever I can made. I got a couple of drop shipping items on, on the website. But uh, we're just getting started with the soon. We're just getting Absolutely. started, bro. Absolutely. Yo, I love the I love the the brand though, man. I love uh everything you've done so far. All the pieces that I have. I, I got quite a couple pieces you blessed me with. Thank you for that. And I, I fuck with all of them. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I I've wore I've worn them all a couple times. You know what I'm saying? They there's just quality material and uh the printing, everything is real dope, man. Appreciate um, it. Uh, and the logo, I like the logo. I like the symbol. Can you can you break that down for us? Yeah, yep, yep. So this is uh this is called the Olin symbol. And um, it means heartbeat or movement. And uh, it pretty much means to move and act now with all your heart. Just like, just rope, you know? So, when I, and, and it, the way that I came out about that for the, for the part of the logo is from my cord company, I was just like, I need a logo for my cords. And when I seen the meaning of the, the Olin symbol, I'm just like, right. that's it right there. That's it right there. So that's why it's it's part of my logo for my cord company and it's part of my logo for for the for the the merch too. That's ill, man. Thank you for that. Yep. Thank you for that right there. Everybody now, thinks the it's the Aztec calendar, but this is the Olean symbol. This is a little bit different. Not a lot of people got that. <laughs> no, no doubt. What what did you say they think it is? I'm sorry. Uh, the Aztec calendar because it's okay, similar. Okay, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. how it has these uh these four points right here? Indeed. So, Yep, it's kind of similar to the Aztec calendar, but this is a this is a different symbol. No doubt. And what is what is the what culture does that symbol come from? Uh we we so people call it Aztec, but we call it uh we call it Mexica. <clears throat> the the only reason they call it Aztec is because they were supposedly from uh Aztlan, which they migrated from. So that's why they call them Aztecs. Nobody from Mexico or anybody like that calls calls themselves Aztec. I mean, if they do, they don't know. They don't know. They don't know it right yet. But we're we're the last the last tribe of the Aztecs. The Aztecs were called the Mexica, and it's spelled M E X I C A, but it's pronounced Mexica. No doubt. Thank you for that, brother. That's definitely yep. a gem right there. Yep. Yo, yo, Vinny, do you uh are you into literature? Do you enjoy reading? So, man, I I have a, I don't have that much time. I'm spread super thin, but uh, I got a couple books on uh on Audible. So uh, I did read a, a a book called Contagious that uh, Nipsey Hussle talked about and uh, about marketing and branding. And obviously, I, I've been taking taking points off the books. You know what I mean? Soak that in. Yup, yup. So a little bit. I read a little bit. You know, I always like to sharpen that sword, no matter what it is, whether it's knowledge, or learning something new, anything. It doesn't matter. Like I like stepping my game up constantly. No doubt. No doubt. Yo, Vinny, I really appreciate you taking this time, man, and, and giving the people some some of that information right there. You dropped a bunch of jewels, man. Yo, before we go, though, right, is there anything, anything else you want to put people on, you want to let them know about? Mm, like I said earlier, don't wait. Don't sleep on it. Handle it. Get up. Get off that ass. Go do something. Get whatever goal you're trying to reach, get that. No, no excuses. Doubt. No doubt. Yo, Vinny, let them know where they can follow you at. You know what I mean? How they could get in tune with the with the brand and all that. Tattoo Vinny on Instagram. T-A-T-T-O-O-V-I-N-N-I-E. Soon Merch. S-O-O-N-M-E-R-C-H. Tap in. Make an order. You could even direct message me. Schedule an appointment. Whatever you want to do. And for the for the tattoo artists out there that, that might want to grab a zip cord from you directly yep. or personally... You could go on my Soon Merch website, or you could just hit me up on Instagram. I got some made in the garage. I'll make make some if I'm out of stock. I actually just got an order of 50 cords, so I'm going to be busy making cords. If anybody need a cord, I'll, I'll be in the garage. <laughs> Fire. And remember what he said, uh, ladies and gentlemen. 
Don't be afraid to send that DM. People do talk back, and that's how bridges are built. Man, can't Yo, stress baby. that enough. Once again, man, thank you for this so much. I appreciate you. Nothing but much respect, love, brother. Much love and respect, dog. Peace.